Ça, c'est pas du vous. C'est là Ouais, je vais Hi everyone, um, I'm Thibaut Saunier, I work at Tigralia Consultancy Company and I'm going to talk a bit about uh, GST Transcoder which basically is a set of uh, JStreamer elements and a library to, uh, to expose a high level API for transcoding uh, use cases. So a little bit of history about the project, we started it in 2015 uh, for the the PTV project. Basically, the main goal for, for that was to uh, have to uh, make an API to easily um, transcode media files to proxy files. So basically, proxies are uh, a version of the assets with the right codecs for video editing. So just like you import your assets, your media files in, in PTV and it will transcode it to a format that we can properly use for video editing. Um, and on top of that, we recently also merged uh, um, the support for scaled proxies where JST Transcoder will be used to uh, rescale the same media file so that it goes faster when you do video editing. And uh, yeah, we wanted to propose to have upstream an API uh, to handle all the transcoding use cases, simple ones. Um, and recently we moved that API to JST Plugins Bad. This is going to be released as part of the 1.18 release. So in the next six months, most probably. The goal of the project is to simplify transcoding pipeline creation. So you don't have to build your, your pipeline for transcoding yourself. Uh, it reuses components that already, already existed for encoding only, which is just the uh, encode bin. And it proposed an API to describe the, the media formats for the, transcode, for the transcoding target, basically. Um, the goal is also to, have, to finally have a list of well-known encoding targets. So this is also part of the JST encode bin. I mean, the API itself is part of the plugin base utilities, where you basically have a text file that describes a, a specific um, encoding format. So it's called encoding target. And uh, we want to propose a flexible and simple client line interface to do simple transcoding, uh, something similar to what FFmpeg provides in its tool. So first, we built uh, JStreamer plugins, which exposes two JStreamer elements. Here, we have first transcode bin, which basically has one sync pad, one source pad, and uh, it will just like take the stream in, do everything for the transcoding, and then you can mix it, and then you have the source pad where uh, you can plug whatever sync you want after that. And uh, it reuses encode bin, which um, that, that is going, the transcode bin is going to do the decoding, so it will basically plug a decode bin and then a, an encode bin uh, after that, which is a bin that will um, build the internal pipeline to do the encoding itself. So it will plug the, the encoders. Uh, if you have rescaling to be done, it will just add a video scale element and then it will uh, plug the mixer and the same for the audio. You can have how many, as many streams as you want. Um, depending on the, on the encoding profile that you, that you provide, which is basically an object that uh, describes the meta types and settings that you want for the transcoding target. And after that, we have the UAI transcode bin element, which basically takes three simple properties. The first one is the input UI, then you have the profile, which is the JST encoding profile that I talked a bit about. And then you have the output UI. So you can like have a very simple pipeline that will do the, the, whole, trans, the whole transcoding uh, job. Setting three properties. So it's very, it's very similar. The, the idea behind all that API is to have something very similar to Playbin, but for transcoding. Um, 
So on top of those elements, we have a high level li a library that exposes an API. So um, basically, you, we have the gested transcoder object, which is the main object of the library. And then you can simply uh, create it. So you just provide a source UI, destination UI, and the encoding profile. The encoding profile in that function is basically um, a serialized stream that describes the media. So you will most probably have like the caps of the, the source caps of the muxer, then you will have the source caps for each encoder. And basically that's it. It's a, it's a, a more flexible um, serialization format. I will talk a bit about that later. But you can also provide an, a well-known encoding target directly. For example, if you say, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a bit later. So then you just have two functions to run. So here you have the run uh, method that will just do synchronously run the target, run the, run the transcoding process, and that's it. Or you can run async where you have more control over what is, is, being, what is happening. And, uh, and you can see exactly what, what happens. Uh, here you can, yeah, we have the documentation where we actually have, we have some signals um, to, to, to underload that. Um, so yeah, like usual things. It's, the idea is that that API is very similar to JST player. So JST transcoder is the same. Like the idea is to, to have a, very, uh, a symmetric API with JST transcoder. So here you can look at that API. It's basically, if you are familiar with uh, JST player, it's the same thing basically, but for transcoding. Very similar. Um, so let's make a simple uh, transcoding job in Python. It's a transcoding program here. That, that will take only two arguments, argv1 and argv2, uh, where you have the source UI, the desk UI, and an encoding profile. In that case, I just um, provide a well-known encoding target. For example, that's for YouTube, where it will just like follow the exact spec that YouTube requires for, um, for the file that we will send to them. So, and then you just run that, and it will just like do the transcoding and everything as specified here. So in three lines of code, basically, um, you have a transcoding job. The API is a bit more flexible than that. For example, for PTV, we had a use case where we wanted to have the transcoding of the proxies uh, where we are also were generated the thumbnails. So in the, in the PTV uh, user interface, you also have thumbnails in the timeline for each, not each frame, but each one second, you have a frame showing up in the, in the timeline. And here you can see that uh, we have some enough flexibility to under that uh, in, the, in the same API, you just basically have a way to provide some uh, GST pipeline, GST, yeah, past, past um, serialized pipeline. And uh, this way you can just like, here, I, you don't see it very well, I think, but <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a bit better, maybe. Okay. No, that doesn't work. Okay. Anyway, so here at the, at, in the same pass, we transcode and we we uh, generate the thumbnails. And yeah, you can even if it's very high level API, you have the control over what the how the pipeline is generated, etc. You have some some kind of uh, APIs for that. So on top. Of all that, we built a GST transcoder uh, client, uh, command line interface. Uh, basically, it just takes the source UI, the destination UI, and then you have uh, the encoding format that you want the, 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 the file to be transcoded into. Um, also, for example, that tool will just use well-known encoding targets uh, based on the, on the extension of the target to, of the destination UI. So here, if you say, I want to transcode that uh, Matroska file into um, MP4, we have a set of 
uh, encoding targets, so well-known encoding targets that will say, okay, MP4, let's let's use H.264 and AAC inside the uh, inside the uh, MP4. Um, we'll make a quick demo. So let's. So here you, we will just like use a bit more advanced uh, syntax for the encoding profile. Here I say I want to transcode that MP4 file uh, into MKV and I want to specify that the MKV file will uh, be scaled up to uh, full HD and we encode it in H.264. So the, the, you can find all the syntax specification in the in the JST transcoder in the JST encoding profile documentation, and here we'll just use raw audio mixed into the mixed into the um, into Matroska. We can run that, <laughs> and. Um, Okay, and yeah, that just transcodes the file, and it's very simple. So we have like quite nice output. It kind of describes everything that happens, uh, how you will, uh, what is going to be used, etc. Um, it also helps you, for example, if you are specifying uh, media streams that do not, you can't encode. It will tell you all the warnings, etc. So yeah. In the end, in the end, the the, the the command line interface is very simple, but it's already quite flexible thanks to the way uh, encoding profiles are, are serialized. Uh, in the future, we want to use the JST stream and JST stream collection API so that you can map the input stream on the output stream. So you can say, I want that stream, that stream, and that stream to be, to be uh, encoded in that format, that format, that format. So just doing the mapping. So, uh, Currently, we don't, I mean, at the, at the JST transcoder level, you can handle that, but it's, it's not nice at all. And uh, with JST streams, it's going to be much cleaner, and you will have like a proper API to map streams in the input and the output. Um, we have some ideas about reworking the whole API, and have another, another API um, below it so that you can easily uh, send transcoding jobs to to the to a, a, a transcoding server and things like that. Uh, it's already kind of part of the API, the way we think the API, but we have some work to do on that. If people are interested, we are very happy to work with you. And uh, so, do you have any question about JST transcoder? Yes. So the question is if we have looked at live transcoding uh, use cases. I mean, if you provide just a UAI, <laughs> it can be live. It's, it's, it's going to do the, to make the pipeline and transcode it. Um, if you have more, I mean, yeah, there is nothing preventing you then uh, in terms of granularity of uh, what you need exactly or it might, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why. Maybe you will have to get the pipeline at some point and, and tweak things yourself. But yeah, there, there is no reason why uh, there should be no problem apart from bugs. <laughs> any other question? No? Yes? Yes, so basically you have, in the API, you have to, a way to say uh, avoid re-encoding, it's called, so it's a property on JST transcoder and all the, all the elements below that, where uh, JST encode bin is going to be smart and avoid re-encoding if possible. Uh, if, yeah, so that's transmissing. And it also has some feature where it tries to re-encode only the necessary bits, if possible, with a limited set of codecs. So in terms of pipelines, basically what we have is a, a split, 
stream split, I think it's called, where the stream can go through uh, the encoding, the encoding uh, sub pipeline, set of elements, or it can just like go up there and just like avoid uh, all those elements. And then you have uh, another element that will just like handle that on the other side. Yes? Uh, sure. <laughs> the the only thing in that case, I don't think we have an RTP sync right now, do we? No. Yeah. Uh, but the solution is just for you to provide the sync. There is no problem with that. Uh, handling the RTP source is not a problem at all. We just grab the screen, but then you can, yeah. You have to set up a few things, but yeah. There is, like, you can use that API to do the transcoding of... Uh, HSP strings and HTTP strings. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh,